Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining uh, another 40, 40 method, 40 user group meeting. Uh, it's May 25th, 2022. This is meeting number 57. Uh, moving right along. Uh, what we do in this meeting on the on the agenda for this one anyways is uh, I'll go through my usual description of the, the group and what we're trying to do here. Um, we'll get uh, a, a little recap of what's been um, been going on in the 40 happy hour uh, from Kirk Brooks. We'll get some news from 4D from uh, Jim and Louise in California. Um, I'll review some of the uh, some some articles, some recent articles. There's there's always a lot of content on the 4D blog, so it's hard to uh, hard to choose uh, what to highlight there. But I'll I'll uh, highlight a few articles that uh, that jumped out at me. Um, then we'll have Ad uh, talk a little bit about some recent tech notes in the knowledge base. Uh, some really great uh, 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 tech notes. The tech notes are always the uh, the longer ones. Tech tips uh, are just a, a, a little did you know you could do this kind of thing. And tech notes are a deeper exploration of topics. Um, and then we'll get our uh, our special presentation today. Uh, we'll be hearing from uh, about the Southern Illinois University Medical and Dental Education Preparatory Program. Uh, we have uh, Trent Stevens joining us here. And then we'll talk a little bit about the next meeting on July 27th, 2022. So uh, my name is Brent Raymond. I organize the 40 Method 40 User Group. Uh, the website is 40method.com and can be reached at 40method at gmail. Com. Um, what we do in these meetings is uh, it's pretty simple. Just uh, we we use Zoom to bring together scattered community of developers and users. This meeting in particular is focused on uh, on the user side of a, of, an, of a 4D application. Um, we use video conferencing Zoom uh, for for these meetings to allow people to participate from anywhere. Uh, it's, uh, it's always interesting to see where people are connecting from. 40 um, has a, a very global presence. Uh, we, all of our meetings are recorded and the presentations are recorded. Uh, some really great content out there um, to, uh, to, to look back on. Uh, a lot of it, it's amazing how much of it is still relevant uh, uh, given uh, some of these um, techniques are, you know, they were best techniques at the time and they still are. And, uh, and so what we're just trying to do is to provide fresh new content, exposure, and, and see where 4D is out in the world and, uh, and what, what uh, users and developers are doing with 4D everywhere. So thanks for joining again. Um, I'm going to, let's see, is, uh, is Kirk with us? Oh, there you are. Hey, Kirk. Um, um, yeah. Yep, yep, that's uh, quite, uh, that's the next slide, but... Um, Sorry, jumped ahead of myself. Uh, and I'd just like to, uh, you know, put, put an invitation out there for, uh, for all of you to be a presenter if you're watching this uh, right now or on YouTube. Uh, you know, perhaps it's your turn to, uh, to, to show off your application as a user, what you use and how you use it in the, your corner of the world. Um, you know, this is your group if you're in the, uh, in the 4D community uh, you know, jump, jump in and, uh, and there's a couple of open dates in 2022, July 27th and August 31st. Uh, we'll be putting up more dates for later in the year. Um, if those dates aren't exactly what you're uh, able to work with, uh, just, just let me know and we can push it around. Like we said, uh, you know, this is your group too. So uh, let's work with whatever schedule that, that you can sort out. Um, the schedule is available at 40method.com slash schedule. So now, uh, uh, bumping over to Kirk here to talk a little bit about uh, the 4D happy hour, 4D on tap. Thank you, Brent. And I am um, coming to you live from beautiful downtown San Francisco. I have an appointment down here in a little bit, but uh, I didn't realize it's going to conflict with this until last night. Um, 4D happy hour has uh, been doing well. We're, uh, you know, uh, typically have a, a good group uh, for the last month or so I've taken to the um, declaring a topic for each meeting which is um, you know as they say in Pirates of the Caribbean is really more of a guideline than a, than a hard fast rule but it gives us a place for discussions to start uh, we talk about 
pretty much all things 4D. It's uh, frequently we'll talk about um, presentations. I'm sure we'll be discussing this one uh, on Friday for those of us who are here. Uh, and really to piggyback on something you mentioned about 4D method is that it is a uh, it's it's a way for developers to to just come and, and talk about what we're doing and um, talk about uh, you know discuss problems get some ideas for things uh, find work and, and of course share code and, and just look at what other people are doing and uh, you know the the feedback I get from folks who come regularly to uh, or even just occasionally really for that matter to the to the happy hours that it's it's, it's really rare that you don't pick up on something new that you didn't know about. And whether it was something 4D specific, whether it was uh, something about just how to arrange your desktop or some other tool that helps you uh, using 4D. These are, these are things that, that just come about when you see somebody else's desktop and start going, oh, why are you using that? Or how do you, how do you guys do this? Uh, it's, it's, a place to discuss that to look at the way other people are doing things and um, you know generally just kind of broaden your horizons and finally i will um just encourage our european brethren to um consider a proposal that um Dougie put on the uh discuss forum a week or so ago of starting a european base for the happy hour one with a, a time more convenient to the folks on, on that side of the pond and um, let me just say I, I encourage you to follow up on that uh, give Doug some support and um, just try it out I, I think you'll uh, you, you'll come to really appreciate the uh, the loose format and the opportunity to interact with one another and as always I invite anyone to stop by sometime and our 40 happy hour you're always welcome uh, and I look forward to seeing old friends and seeing new faces Thanks, Kirk. Yeah, no, and and thank you for uh, for connecting and doing this on, on the go. <clears throat> I know normally we uh, we try and uh, and connect over video, but it's not always possible. So it's uh, I really appreciate your uh, giving a little um, uh, review of the, uh, the the forty happy hour. Um, one, one great thing about the the happy hour is you know we do these meetings every six or six weeks or so. Um, and, uh, and and the happy hour is every week. Uh, generally on Fridays. And, you know, there's always, it uh, seems like there's always uh, current topics to discuss and uh, you get uh, more of uh, people's immediate reaction to uh, to some of that. I know in uh, one of the recent meetings, they discussed um, uh, the deprecation of, uh, of, of inter-process variables, <clears throat> hot topic for happy hour uh, amongst us developers. And, uh, and and so on, you know, you know, or how, how people use constants with uh, with classes these days. Um, so it's um you know some really really great discussion. It's uh, re relaxed, uh, no slides nexus necessary, thankfully, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, you get uh, some impromptu uh, sharing of uh, code and uh, and looks at uh, how other people are uh, uh, developing approaches to development problems and uh and and sometimes there's a, a an opportunity to share about opportunities out there in the 4d world so anyways thanks kirk for organizing that and thanks for the uh the recap okay. you bet. thank you brett yep uh now over to uh jim and louise uh for a little bit of uh news from the 4d world the actual 4d corporation world <laughs> thank you brett thank you, Lu louise would you like to start please yeah, sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, so just two quick updates. Um, so we have actually a 4D training going on. Um, it's um, it's about um, 4D and uh, Git. So it's get started with 4D and Git. Exactly the 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 name of this training. It's um, it's um, uh, the the it's presented by uh, Thomas Mo, uh, which is the VP of Strategy at 4D. Um, we're still having um, some spots um, left, so if some of uh, you didn't get their 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 spot yet, just um, go ahead now and and register. I will put the link into the chat, so if some of you wants to go directly to to uh, the registration page, just um, yeah, go ahead. And um, 
something else I wanted to share is that uh, we're trying uh, to be more active on our social medias. So please, uh, if you want to go on Twitter or Facebook, uh, you can um, follow 4D and specifically the hashtag 4D Inc. because 4D Inc. is um, is really related to our activities in North America. And also, if you have any question or anything, just please come to us. Um, my email address is right here on the slide. So if, yeah, if there is anything, please contact me and I will be glad to help you or answer to your question anytime. So, yep, thank you. And Jim, if you have anything to add, then uh, your turn. I do, thank you, Louise. Um, yeah, first off, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Jim Subcheck. Brent, thanks for um, inviting the 4D team to this meeting. As always, it's Ad, Louise, and myself. I'm gonna see most of my time to, to Ad and, and Louise. Um, but we always appreciate the opportunity to, um, to share what's going on at 4D. And um, I've said it before, but we really appreciate the work that you do in putting these meetings together. Uh, you make it seem so effortless and uh, they come off so so uh, flawless, but I know there's a lot of work behind the scenes when you're interviewing um, the potential presenters and, and getting that all together and just making sure everything is running smoothly. So thank you for that. Um, we are looking forward to Trent's presentation on the med prep, med prep program. Um, med prep program. Um, sounds like a really interesting application. Uh, that serves a great purpose at, at uh, SIU and for the community at large. Um, we definitely have a shortage of health professionals out there and uh, this application is, is helping to fill that void. So looking forward to that. Um, a couple of technical updates and, and I know that Brent will probably discuss these as well, but uh, feature releases, we are uh, currently in uh, V19 R4 as the one in production and V19 R5 is uh, in beta and um, that was released soon after R4. R4 is the first feature release for 19 R4 for which we had a hotfix. And the hotfix came out on May 16th, um, a month after uh, R4 was released. And we'll be doing the R um, hotfixes every month now, um, once a month so that uh, one of the, one of the um, the drawbacks that people were saying to us about not going to the feature releases was that there were no uh, bug fixes. Well, now we have those every month and you'll be able to, um, to download those and use them. So um, hopefully you'll be looking at our releases or feature releases in the future. Um, if you're in the LTS cycle, of course, those are updated as well uh, with bot fixes and um, in, uh, the .x releases. V19.3 will be coming out in just a few days. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. For V18, um, as we've been saying for this, this, in these meetings and other meetings as well, uh, the current version is 18.5 hotfix 5. 18.6 is due out in early June, and then that's going to be it for V18. Uh, V18.6 uh, will be the final release in the V18 LTS cycle. Um, June 17th, which is about three weeks or so, will be the final day of sales and support for V18. So if you need expansions, uh, another server or whatever, um, please be sure to look at that before uh, June 17th. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, as far as training goes, um, Louise mentioned that, that Thomas Malls training that um, is ongoing now. That's the two-part Git training. Um, when we first announced the first sessions on for May 17th, it sold out in about three hours. Um, very similar to the Metallica concert that's coming up in August. So those sold out in about three hours as well. Um, so then we added another, another US um, set of meetings, May 31st and June 14th. And those are just about sold out as well. So I'm sure by the end of this 4D method meeting or sometime today, uh, those uh, May 31st meetings uh, along the June 14th part two will be gone. So please sign up for those if you're interested. Um, we're also planning a live two-part um, training on 4D View Pro in June 
and July. Um, that will be Achim Peschka of 40 Germany, who is also, like Thomas Mall, uh, an excellent trainer and presenter. So looking forward to that. The other training that we have available, like 40 Beginners Training, is, is going really well. Um, and that's, of course, part of our on-demand set of trainings. So if you have a new developer or someone in your company that just wants to learn 4D, please be sure to look at that um, on, on demand. Um, and those are um, selling really well for us and people getting giving us good feedback about those trainings. So I think that's about it for the training front. Just wanted to mention the uh, V19 R4 product webinar that uh, we presented earlier this month. Uh, that was Will Taylor, who um, an ad, of course, who do such a great job at those um, those quarterly presentations with the new feature releases. We had over 500 registrations for globally for that um, presentation then in German, French, and English. Um, so thank you very much for your support and the interesting questions that you um, provide in those feature release um, webinars. And the new partner newsletter, um, Louise is working really hard on a marketing effort from the 40 side. I'm sure most of you appreciate what she's doing. We're seeing a lot more um, information going out um, about uh, partner programs, about trainings, about um, new things we're doing in professional services. So please be sure to read that and, and give us your feedback. So I think that's about it for me, Brent. I wanted to wish everyone a, a happy Memorial Day weekend and beginning of summer. And um, we will be talking soon. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Louise. Yeah, I also want to uh, to highlight the the Thomas Mal uh, uh, hard rocking uh, uh, demos that he does. Uh, I I still refer to um, his project mode conversion demo uh, for for uh, project mode conversion related uh, work, but um, uh, <clears throat> his uh, his presentation on Git uh, I'm sure is not to be missed and. Um, it would be uh, it would be awesome if uh, if he could get together with Metallica and uh, and rock out. That's a, <laughs> it's a great idea. Well, uh, you know, some, someone should tweet that out to Metallica, you know, and see if they see if they bite. You never know. Um, but yeah, that's that's also a really good thing for the R releases. I mean, a lot of us uh, uh, have really embraced the R uh, way of uh, of 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 you know. Of uh, and you know taking up the new features as they as they become available with the R releases, but um, yeah, it, you can sometimes find yourselves in a quandary if you need a hot fix uh, and you're dependent on an R release. So that's a that's a nice uh, 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 nice that 40 is uh, now offering hot fixes for those as well, so that you don't have to uh, uh, switch back to the dot releases or the LTS releases if there's a some kind of a problem that can't be fixed in the R. So, and um, yeah, and also uh, thanks for the uh, the flattery, Jim. That um, that is always appreciated. Anytime you'd like to uh, to compliment the uh, the the the, the, uh, the, the non perfection of these meetings, uh, it's always good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> um, but anyways, thanks again to uh, everyone at 4D for uh, for supporting uh, these meetings with uh, with news. Sometimes we get little news tidbits that uh, that haven't been shared elsewhere here in the in the 4D method meetings. So um, so that's always fun to hear. So anyways, thanks again. And uh, now on to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the the blog articles that uh, again I think our our last couple of meetings with Apparaja that was back in March. So there's been a lot of great content coming out on the blog at nearly constant pace. Um, so one of the ones uh, that I thought was cool was uh, uh, on directory file management and merged server projects. I don't know if uh, how uh, what the percentage is uh, of uh, uh, how many of our projects are, are uh, deployed in a, a merged server or merged a standalone application um, but it's been interesting with project mode to uh, where where does the directory file go the directory file of course is uh, uh, the the users and their passwords and uh, may perhaps a default user if you manage your own user list um, but it's it's nice now that you can embed the uh, the directory file in the project 
uh, in the built server itself. So you don't have to worry about um, uh, making sure that it stays in the right place uh, and doesn't get edited by the data file. Good stuff. Uh, next one is uh, Orda, optimize performance with full control over REST requests. Um, this is a, a, a nice in-depth article uh, that goes into uh, all the customizations that you can do with the 40 Orda cache. Uh, and uh, in the remote context, uh, you can now see what's in the cache. You can set uh, you know the number of records that get loaded into the cache and the expiry time for uh, the, the remote cache settings. Um, and uh, and it gives you uh, some insight into uh, using the the context better uh, for paging with list boxes and whatnot. Um, it's uh, yeah, they've really opened uh, opened up the hood to uh, how their uh, communication works uh, with uh, with order calls to uh, to your data sources. Um, so well worth a read. Also, uh, uh, calling back to Apparagita's request that he shared in the uh, in the previous meeting. Um, this is another example of um, thankfully uh, 40, you know, listening to the the developer community and uh, and and delivering on a request. Uh, the article is a seamless way to manage parameters. Uh, one of the um, things that that Apparagita found awkward was uh, having to uh, deal with a, a a flexible number of parameters, you know, in different methods, um, and uh, you know, having to. Uh, 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 you know, explicitly copy those into a collection to pass on to uh, to other uh, methods that are being called and, and classes that are being called um, <clears throat> functions and whatnot. So we have the new command copy parameters, which as simple as it sounds, just takes the parameters and puts them in a collection so that you can uh, um, generically pass those parameters on to say other uh, functions that you'll be calling, which is a nice way to uh, sort of not reinvent the wheel in every method or function that you're calling. And, uh, sometimes you don't even need to use all of the parameters, uh, but they're they're there uh, and and it's not awkward to use now. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> and finally, uh, the they and I believe this is R five as well. Uh, that your the article is access your component classes from your host project. Uh, this is great if you do uh, a lot of component work and you've uh, started you know with some older uh, databases or if you haven't jumped to project mode yet um, <clears throat> you know components are a great way to uh, take advantage of the new uh, features and, and projects and start working with classes earlier um, except uh, it was uh, you had to jump through some hoops to uh, to get access to your class that you created in the component back in the host database um, so now you uh, have you can set up a uh, a namespace uh, for the uh, component where you can access the the classes that are that are shared through the component and and while doing that uh, you get the added benefit of autocomplete which obviously helps to cut down on bugs and uh, typos and uh, and lets you more easily look and see what's uh, how to how to use a function without going into uh, the documentation for for that component so great stuff uh, and like I said there's just tons more 40 right pro 40 view pro uh, articles in there and um, and just a lot of great how do I uh, content uh, for in, in a lot of these blog articles so uh, definitely 40 blog is a great place to go for learning about new development uh, in the 40 world and new upcoming features that are uh, in the next R releases and and, uh, and LTS releases Okay, so uh, now I'm going to hand it over to Ad to talk a little bit about what's uh, of note in the knowledge base, which is another great place to uh, the the OG place, the original place to go find uh, this kind of content uh, where uh, uh, learning about uh, techniques with 4D. Thanks, Brett. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I think it's been a few months now since I've done this. So. For 
This time around, I want to focus uh, on four tech notes. Um, now we have more tech notes on the knowledge base since the last time we, uh, we, uh, we are here. Uh, but this time uh, we only have a handful that I want to highlight. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the recent one that we just published, um, the powers of system workers. This is a uh, created by Brian Yen, one of our um, technical um, um, services engineer. So um, the feature that um, uh, we presented in um, 19 or four recently, uh, we thought about it and it's something that we think that many people would benefit from especially for many years now, if you think about the command launched external process, it gives you the ability to execute external um, procedure or something that happens outside of the 40 context. Now you can do it synchronously or asynchronously. However, if you are doing asynchronously, um, you kind of uh, miss the benefit of um, you know, allowing um, 40 to get back the result of that execution. Now with the system workers, um, uh, we give you the best of both worlds. We allow you to um, send the command um, to execution uh, outside of the context of 4D. When the execution is done, there's a callback that it can make um, so that 4D will receive the information back, uh, allowing you to continue um, processing or executing anything inside of the context of 4D while there are other works being done outside. When the, the, uh, the work is done, it just sends back the callback and you receive the information and you make decisions what you want to do with it. So this tech note highlights um, some of the, um, the, uh, the key um, features and scenario and it even gives you some uh, useful example that you can probably take advantage of. So have a look at it. Uh, it might give you some ideas on what to do with it. Now, the second one, um, this is um, something that we always thought about when we write a tech note. We don't want to get too technical or get too advanced or even um, focusing on something new in 4D because we have a variety of developers that use 4D, uh, beginners, intermediate. So sometimes we come out with something um, as um, you know, as basic and fundamental, starting you know with the, what are the deployment options that you can have when you have a 4D applications? Because uh, 4D produces um, not only uh, a single user; you have a standalone, um, uh, double clickable. You have a, a double click, uh, double clickable uh, client and server, or you know even a traditional client server deployment. So there are some um, many options that you can use depending on your business constraint or business requirement or you know, the technical requirement. Um, so all of these um, are put together in a form of uh, you know, uh, uh, options uh, and basic um, you know, ideas on what you need to do, what you need to consider, what are the options available to you as the developer or even administrator of the database. So um, yeah, I think this one will be um, probably not just uh, for the beginners. Uh, many of our um, customers still have to, um, should be, I uh, should refer to some of these um, times to times because you, know, because you don't do everything um, all the time. Um, I personally have a problem uh, remembering things. That's why we write the tech note. We have a bunch of tech tips so we can refer back to it. So this is something that can probably be, you know, somewhere on your bookshelf or on your, on your hard drive, uh, a link um, that you can refer back to. Okay. Um, the next one, this is the uh, one that deals with uh, QR code generation within 4D. Now we have many examples over the years that we offer, um, you know, in terms of how do you generate a QR code from 4D? And when you think of QR code versus, you know, barcode, they are used differently, right? Um, so we're trying to make it as simple as, as and as light as possible. In the past, when we introduced um, uh, this type of technology, we often uh, resource to um, 
something that is, you know, something like PHP or for example. Now in 4D traditionally, uh, we don't have this feature built in. Now what Net, uh, which is one of our uh, technical services engineer did was um, he um, utilized a, a very light version of a, a JavaScript. Now this is in conjunction with um, web area being able to run off screen. So therefore you have options to execute some useful JavaScript code that you may not be able to do uh, in the past or might not be able to do easily in the past. Now you can run off screen area of the, uh, the web, area, web area, allowing you to execute some useful JavaScript. In this case, um, you know, we use that very light version of the JavaScript to execute um, allowing um, uh, 4D to generate an image of the QR code that you can print, you can do whatever you want to it. And the code um, that is presented in this techno is quite useful. Uh, he even gave a generic method that you can just pass in uh, the information that you wanted to generate a QR code. It was it's just gonna spit out a, an image of the QR code that you can use one method, that's it, right? Um, so take a look at it. Um, it should be pretty useful in many projects. So the last um, tech note, this is the one that I published, I, I, I put together. Um, uh, it's about the native webcam support and integration. So this is nothing new um, in terms of um, the technology. Uh, many years ago, one of our employees, Vance, um, created a tech node that utilized a bunch of different things, um, Node.js uh, and other framework that needs to allow him to um, get the image from the webcam and project it into the web area. And from there, we just you know uh, do some uh, a simple JavaScript call to take the picture uh, from the web area into 4D. And it has been used by many of our customers. Now in version, um, 19 or three with the up with the updated version of the web engine inside of 4D, it makes it much easier now and actually so easy that I, I just couldn't imagine it cannot any can be easier than this. Now I can't just give 4D the whole benefit is because one of the reason why we were able to do that because um, Google Chrome's uh, engine, web engine has been updated and enhanced over the years. Um, now the reason update, the HTML5 support in the Google, Google Chrome's engine has been enhanced in the way that, um, you know, the, the image capturing or the camera stream um, can be, display in the web uh, in the, the web engine very easily now because we didn't update on the web engine inside of we so we have that benefit that comes along with the, the technology as well so um you know this one is actually you know if you look at it um the way that i lay out the, the techno that described from one step <clears throat> to the next uh it, it's I'm trying to lay it, out, lay it out in a way that is as simple to understand as possible. The majority of work is basically within your, uh, within the HTML file, um, along with some JavaScript, uh, very light and uh, um, a simple CSS. And that's just about it. Um, anything that um, 4D takes from the web area, it's as simple as um, doing a, a callback of the JavaScript returning 4D with the image. So um, you know, you know, take a look at it. I think it will, you, you'll be surprised how easy it is. And also the, the example that, it is that comes with this tech node is a component ready. So you can recompile your example and uh, make it a component and stick it into any host database and start using it. I also included a, a simple implementation of um, almost like a, a photo booth, um, Kind of like uh, uh, on Mac um, OS, um, giving you an options to select um, camera view, uh, the camera source, and um, the picture and the layout, the, the capturing of the image. So um, you know that's just um, something that is already ready to go. Now you can take this, the, the same um, implementation um, that's underlying um, implementation uh, and make it part of your own 
um, project, and that's fine too. Uh, that shouldn't be um, too difficult to do. Okay, so that's all. Um, hopefully, uh, you guys get a good use out of these tech notes and ideas. And uh, I'll see you next time on the next batch of the tech notes. <laughs> Thanks, Ad. Yeah, Ad, Ad's highlighting a, a, some really good tech notes there. Uh, you know, it, it uh, really prompted me to give them a, a, a good read. And, you know, all of them have some, some very interesting things. I mean, the new webcam <laughs> support, the, the, the old tech note uh, that you referred to, I believe, was the one where they um, used OpenCV uh, to make it happen is, is remarkable. It, this, this... <laughs> Yeah, right. it's, it's remarkable how much easier this one is where, uh, you know, you don't need to know about OpenCV as cool as it is. I mean, uh, if anyone, it's worth a Google if you don't know about OpenCV. It's uh, <clears throat> where a lot of uh, the uh, computer, uh, computer vision stuff, libraries that are out there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. Uh, to be able to uh, you know lean on the the Chrome improvements uh, to have have all of that be so much easier. Um, that and uh, you know I, I really enjoyed the uh, the QR codes uh, tech note uh, for how it was able to leverage uh, JavaScript and execute JavaScript function to uh, to, to to use the QR codes. Um, again, I I won't rehash it all, but there's some really great stuff in uh, in all of those uh, tech notes. And thanks to Ad for helping to. Uh, uh, make all of these uh, tech notes happen. So appreciate it. Um, and now we'll uh, kick over to our uh, special topic for this meeting. Uh, in a uh, 40 method meeting earlier this year, I made a special invitation to highlight more diversity in the 40 developer and user community. Um, we are a, a very international community, but it's hard to overlook that most of our uh, presenters here are uh, old white guys like me. And, uh, and we tend to, to see more demos focused on development techniques rather than uh, from an applications stakeholders perspective. So uh, today we'll, we'll be seeing it from, uh, from a user's perspective here. Um, so it's nice to hear in response to my invitation that we would uh, get a visit from a group at uh, the Southern Illinois School of Medicine in Carbondale, Illinois, beautiful place down there, part of the uh, uh, part of the world, um, to talk about their program MedPrep. Uh, now I'll, I'll leave it up to uh, our presenter Trent Stevens to describe the program more in detail, but I, I will say that all of their efforts are, are squarely focused on helping educationally and soci socioeconomically disadvantaged students navigate and afford medical school, a mission we can all support, especially in this time when we need more doctors and fewer conflicts. Um, but, uh, but Trent is a, a, a native of uh, South Side of Chicago, uh, in, uh, in my, um, not too far away from where I am here. Uh, it, he's a, a U.S. Army veteran and a father of two. He's an alum of both Western Illinois University and the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, uh, great schools. He is a, a world traveler, having lived in Panama, Thailand, Kuwait, and Qatar, and the U.S., and uh, tr in Trent's professional life, he's been in higher education for 23 years, with 10 of those being with uh, the med, med prep program at SIU as the admissions coordinator. He loves fishing, cooking, hiking, and visiting zoos. And he's here to, today to discuss another one of his passions, which is helping those in need uh, make their way through medical and dental school and how Forty helps him do just that. So uh, welcome, Trent, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Brent. Yeah, yeah. You need to fix that letter in your first name. Make it a T. <laughs> is, is there a way to see people and not see that slide? Is there a way? Uh, I think you'd have to. Um, let's see. I can I can turn off the sharing uh, if, if okay. you want to do it like that. Yeah, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, OK, uh, yeah. stop the shares. Just that way it's easier to. Uh, yeah. I was trying to get where everybody's in the same, you know, like on WhatsApp, I mean, on um, WebEx, we can see all the panels. Is that possible to see everybody at one time? I'm a face reader. It helps <laughs> me. Re yeah. 
Uh, and, can, can, can you see everybody now? Yeah, I see them in, in a straight line. But but anyway, um, um, hello, everyone. Uh, click, thank, up, click, click in the upper right corner, the little view. Icon. Okay, view. And, oh, and, gallery. There we yeah. go. There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, you just learned I'm not a techie. So this this won't be a technical discussion. Um, I sent I sent out a link for Brent to share with you all. It's about an eight minute long link. Um, and the, 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 the topic of the link is why e learning is killing education. And the, the thing that you're going to take away from that is that um, e learning um, curriculum people have, in my opinion, are forgetting about the, the reason why we teach is for students. And then the other reason is um, e, we don't tell stories anymore. And people retain more when you tell them a story, when you put a scenario, when you put PowerPoint slides in a, in a story, it tends to stick better. So I just sent that out just, just to, to share with you is and that's the reason why i have no slides today um because i want to tell you a story um so i um uh, i do have a slight stutter um it, it it came about after my deployment in o2 uh to the war so if i do have some blockage i apologize um so with that said, uh, I came to, let me tell you about Met Prep a little bit. Met Prep was um, created uh, in 1972. And the purpose of Met Prep was the med school noticed there was a decline in physicians in rural Illinois communities. And so they decided to create this program to backfill that vacancy. Now, fast forward to 2022, we could not find enough students who wanted to stay in central and southern Illinois. So uh, at one point, our mission was just for Illinois residents only. But now, two thirds of our students come from other states. Uh, our program, it's a five semester program, and we start every summer, the third week of June. So my new freshman class, our incoming first year class will be June 17th of this year. Uh, this year we have about 22 students that are gonna be starting the first class. Um, we have uh, 36 available seats, but we have a new director now, and his philosophy is quality versus quantity. My last two previous directors focused a lot on quantity. And what was happening was our matriculation rate from med prep to medical school was declining. Students were not making the minimum to get into med school. So now our numbers are around 22, 25, but our matriculation rate is going up. So I think uh, my boss has been here two years. That strategy is working. Now our program, um, I'll, I'll read it to you. So the primary mi mission of the pro the vision of the program is individuals from disadvantaged and minorities communities who have access to quality um, uh, health care. That's our vision. Um, our mission is to increase the number of underrepresented minority individuals and disadvantaged residents from Southern and Central Illinois who will enter and graduate from health profession schools. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, because we could not get enough students um, from Illinois, we've opened up our borders. Um, we have a population of about 98% female. Um, for some reason, females are going into medicine in larger numbers than males. And when I say females, I'm referring to a Latinx and African-American. 
our program is predominantly, I don't know if you can see this poster, but our program is open to all ethnicities, but for some reason, our population is always about 99% either African American or Latin X. Um, so we occasionally will get a um, Asian student or a Caucasian student will join our program. But if they do, they must come from uh, Southern or Central Illinois, which means they must be South of Kankakee, Illinois. Um, as I mentioned, this, the program is five semesters. Our summer is called boot camp. It's a six week, very intense program. Um, and then they will matriculate to their first full fall and spring. During the first year, we focus primarily on getting them ready for the MCAT exam. And if they're a dental track, the DAT. Then they will leave after their spring semester for their second summer. And that's when they will take either their DAT test or their MCAT test. Then they will come back for their last year, which is the fall and spring. And then that's where they will start applying to medical schools. Some of the medical schools that receive our students, um, some go to Dartmouth, some go to Loyola, some go to UIC, some go to the University of Chicago. We've had them pretty much go anywhere in the United States. And we have also had some go to Caribbean schools. But we, don't, we do not personally endorse Caribbean schools here. Um, because we don't know how their residency placement is going to be. We also, um, since I've been with the, with the program, I'm a former six year physician and nurse recruiter for the Department of Defense. And during that time, um, uh, I, when I came to this job, I noticed they were not doing anything with the military. And so I, I now bring in um, healthcare recruiters to offer four-year scholarships to our medical to our students to go and become physicians in the military. So I have a rapport with the with the Army, uh, with the Navy, and with the Air Force. And since I've been here, I've put um, three young ladies in the Air Force as Air Force physicians and one young man uh, with the Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, they've all received the four-year federal scholarship that pays um, about 2,800 a month. They get a direct commission as a second lieutenant. And then upon completion of med school, they get promoted to captain. And then they do their career in the military um, as a physician. So, so I... Um, um, I liked it, I brought that to the table. So to tell you about the 4D story. So when I started MedPrep in 2012, our 4D database had not been upgraded. I believe it was maybe 10 versions behind. Yeah, Mike, it was like 10 versions behind. <laughs> it was horrific when I started here. That's even possible 10 versions behind <laughs> yeah i guess so it, it is Tim. yeah <laughs> yeah they just let 10 v's get ahead of them and so i came in and the lady at the time that was on staff here she was a banner um fanatic but the problem with banner was that banner wasn't doing pluses and minuses grade wise so we couldn't use Banner. And so my boss at the time, uh, Harold Bardo, he had told the young lady that was here at first to transfer all of her notes. Um, well, he tasked her to go find out how to upgrade 4D. And uh, after a year, um, he asked her for her report that he gave her. And um, he told her to give it to me. And this is what her report, it was a handwritten document that was maybe about five pages that really didn't say anything. 
So he tasked me to go and do an extensive search on does 4D even exist anymore? When I came here, they thought 4D was a dinosaur. They thought 4D didn't even exist anymore. And then I did, being a former adjutant general officer, I went and did a report and ended up being nine pages um, and in that report, I was successful to find out that not only does 4D exist, but our dental school uses 4D. And yeah. so, and then I was able to find out that not only does our dental school use 4D, but this long list of universities nationwide use 4D. And so my boss asked me to do some some uh, some more research um, to counter this handwritten document. And by the time I was finished in two weeks, I had this much paperwork on 4D um, on top of the report that I wrote for him. And so with that said, he said, you know what, Trent? Your budget line for IT is open-ended. You can have as much money as you want, fix 4D. So, that's what I did. I went out and um, I met a guy named Bob Cowie. I don't know if anybody recognized that name, but um, he was the first 4D person that had approached me. And I said, for, I said, um, Bob, I need your help. We're about 10 versions behind. The database is so corrupt. I mean, it was it was more corrupt than Chicago politics. That's how corrupt 40 was. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Uh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> and so and so he said, OK, let's have a brainstorming meeting um, and come up with some ideas. Now, let me hit the pause button and tell you what I had to do when I first came here. So when when I first came here, when an applicant applies to our program, I emailed them a PDF application. They sent me back a PDF application. And then they sent me hard copies of every official transcript of every university they've ever attended in their life, university, college, or community college. Once I get all those transcripts, I had to sit in front of 4D with a ruler and manually enter for every transcript, every student, per line, their course, their rubric, their grade, and their credit hours. I was in this office seven days a week, 10 hours a day doing that. And I said, I don't get paid enough to do that. So I'm about to bounce, especially retired military. I'm about to bounce. So then me and Bob got together and I said, Bob, what are they doing up at U of I? University of Illinois uses 4D in their School of Veterinary Medicine. I said, what are they doing with 4D? He said, well, what they did is they took the veterinarian online application and they replicated it in 4D. So then I said, well, what is double AMC doing? How do students apply to medical school? And we researched it. Students are responsible for entering that course work into the database. So I told Bob to recreate that for me. So now I went from seven days a week, 10 hours a day, keying in data, to now that responsibility is on the applicant now, thanks to what Bob wrote for me. And, and so that, I now, and that, happen, and, that, and that happens on the um, on the website now, so that uh, the, the students can log in to uh, create an account and uh, enter all of the data, and that uh, the the website's being served out by a 4D server, and and the data automatically uh, uh, is available then in in 4D without Trent having to work uh, seven days a week and retiring. You know. <laughs> yeah. So I went one year being hazed. And then nine years watching applicants get hazed. And I love it. <laughs> um, one thing I love about the, 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 the new way we do it now is that if a student is sincere, then they're not going to complain that they got to enter two or three or four transcripts into the database. That shows that they're sincere. Now what I do is I just verify what they put in. So because my 
boss gave me an unlimited budget, I hire student workers. So they do my verification for me. So now I, I have no involvement at all with the keying in and the verifying. All I do is uh, approve the work that they've done. And then I had Bob at the time uh, create what's called a transcript analysis. So once all those transcripts are inputted, I can hit one button, boom, it generates a transcript report. And then I give that to my admissions committee. And that's what they use um, to determine if the students meet the minimum uh, CUM GPA and the minimum science GPA to apply. And so the way break came about was um, three years ago, I was uh, severely sick and in a hospital for about 30 days. And when I came out, my former programmer, Bob Cowie, just vanished. He just, I think the aliens came down and picked him up and took him away because he just disappeared. And um, I was in panic mode because my boss at the time said, well, you're gonna have to go back to the old way, which is seven days a week, 10 hours a day. And I was like, no, nah, that ain't gonna happen. Um, I'm about to get up out of here. And so I prayed and I can tell you prayers work because not only did I get a phenomenal replacement for Bob Cowie named Brent, because his name is missing one letter for mine, that was God telling me that was the guy that I prayed for. So. Bob came along in 2019, um, I'm sorry, Brent in 2019. And Brent, you remember I was in panic mode. I remember, yes. Is this even possible? Can, yeah, we couldn't even find the passwords. <laughs> you know, we couldn't find the passwords to even get into Bob's work. Right. But by the grace of God, we were able to get into the database. And I'll never forget, Brent said, I think we can work with this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what, three, four years later, um, he has taken us to a new level that I never even imagined we would be at in 2019. So I don't know if any of these participants on here are the ones that give you bonuses, but if you are <sighs> listening, <laughs> Brent needs a fucking bonus. <laughs> well, I was definitely happy to help him. It, it, because it's... guys, my where I was in my life being in a hospital for 30 days, just in that mental state to have a man and get me out of that for my job sake, he saved my life. And so um, um, for and, and we're always evolving into new stuff now that we're, we're running smooth. Now we can do the fancy, you know, you buy a car and it's running smooth. You get the engine working. Now you can buy all the aftermarket parts. That's what Brent's doing now with us with 4D. We're doing aftermarket cool stuff. <laughs> like for 40 years, there was a sale in 4D that said photo, but there was never a photo there. Brent now, when an applicant applies, they can upload their photo. Um, just little cool stuff like that that we can do now that we're in the most current version and now that it's running semi hiccup free, we can now do cool stuff. Well, well and it's an important, I think, uh, uh, lesson or uh, comment to, you know, all of us developers is, uh, you know, one of these days, I mean, we're, uh, most of us are, are, are quite, quite youthful, at least in our minds, but uh, <laughs> there may come a time when uh, somebody has to take over our projects for us and um, certainly don't want to end up, uh, you know, in a situation where we're ghosting our, our uh, clients and uh, the applications out there because, um, you know, there's some 40s performing some, uh, some really important tasks out there in the wild and uh and supporting great causes like med prep uh so it's it's certainly something that um <clears throat> you know you don't want to i, I know that uh, 4d the company itself also now offers their their own services as well uh but uh you know for for our purposes in the in the private developer community um you know it's always good to uh to work with other developers one way or another at least to give a little exposure to 
uh, the, the projects that we're, we're developing ourselves and to make sure that uh, there's some continuity uh, for uh, who, who's going to take this over if the, uh, you know, they always talk about programmers getting hit by buses. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know about, uh, you know, it, it makes me watch out a lot more when I'm walking around Chicago is all I'm saying, but you know, it's, uh, um, you know, there's a proverbial bus out there for all of us when at some point in time. So it's a good, good thing to, uh, to account for that. But well, that's it, what happened to, that's what happened to me with, with Bob. I never, I never realized how vulnerable I was until he vanished. Yeah. Well, and it, so I'm well, sorry. That, yeah. And I think that it's, you know, the, the story itself uh, on one hand says, uh, uh, how uh, how great it can be, you know, to have a, a custom development, custom program uh, written in 4D that's very capable for, um, you know, taking over uh, <clears throat> taking over, uh, 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 you know, for another system. I'm not sure if uh, we're all familiar with Banner, but it's a very widely used university system for. Uh, 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 you know, student information and transcript information and that kind of thing, um, and uh, and budgeting and whatnot. Uh, but uh, you know, Forty was able to step in and uh, the custom development with custom development uh, offer features that that Banner did not have. And uh, moving past that, uh, historically, you know, uh, with Forty, uh, the application has been able to uh, adapt to the changing needs of the the Med Prep program. Um, now, I was going to say Banner is widely used, but it's widely hated as well. <laughs> um, the problem with Banner is that if you got six people working in the same office, Banner will only give you rights to what you specifically do for your job. So if you only do this particular thing, they were only going to give you access to do that in Banner. And where the problem falls with Banner is that that person get hit by a bus. Now everybody else can't do anything. Whereas what I like about 4D, everybody in this department can log into 4D and see exactly what I see and pick up where I left off once the bus hits me. That's one of the things I like about 4D. I mean, yeah, about 4D. It's not, it's, it's not territorial. Well, and, it, and, and, and we can, you know, do as, as much uh, uh, securing of the data or, uh, you know, partitioning of, of the data as we need to. But in this case, um, there, it's better served to, uh, to, to their office to have uh, more, more of an open access thing. Um, just wanted to highlight uh, a comment in the chat uh, that, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you know, everyone talks about the being hit by a bus, but there's also uh, the programmers that uh, one way or another win the lottery and decide to retire. So it's, uh, you know, one way or another, um, it's, it's, uh, it's good to have uh, continuity. And, uh, and, that, and that's something that we try to do in the 4D method community is to, you know, sort of open the door to, uh, to all of our work so that, you know, um, uh, you know, we don't have to walk into uh, somebody's messy room uh, you know, at, at, at a later time and not, not have any idea what they were up to. So, um, so that's. Yeah. I like that Tim Neville said 10 versions back would be 4D 20, uh, uh, 2003. So I came here in 2012. <laughs> <laughs> well, 40, 40 as a language is, yeah. It's it can go back farther than that. It can go back farther than that. <laughs> it gets into the single digits version six and on back. I just didn't realize until I looked at it. Hey, wow, that's yeah. that's ten versions. Two thousand three is ten versions back. Yeah. yeah, and it was pretty bad. I mean, we couldn't rely. And at the time, they've stopped now. But the, about the first five years of my ten years here, the med school was asking for these these reports for us to give them on like uh, student progress reports on incoming, outgoing, where they're going to school. And I felt so bad because I would send these reports off to Springfield knowing these bad boys are so corrupt. <laughs> but you can only go by the data that you can retrieve. So, so right. um, we actually, we had to, 
we had to switch to SPSS and create that to track the reports they needed because 4D was just so corrupt at the time. Well, in the old days, uh, there was a, a concern about, uh, you know, corruption in the database. And that's, you know, one of the, you know, uh, thankfully, I don't think uh, most of us uh, have had to deal with anything like that for some time now that's been extremely stable. Um, and, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, 4D has been around, I mean, um, correct me if I'm wrong, was it like 35 years, something like that? Uh, Jim, do you know what the? 1984. 1984, oh, yeah. Is that? 38? 38 years, yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's this, some of these applications that were written, uh, you know, a long, long time ago for special purposes, you know, people have been able to keep running uh, one way or another in, in uh, older versions. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, somebody in the, the, you know, probably a, a few people in, in uh, the, you know, user group community here, um, you know, started with version 1.0 or, you know, whatever it was called before 1.0. <laughs> but, this pro but this project, Brent, do you know roughly what version it started in? Is it a... Uh, let's see. I, I think it was updated to, uh, wasn't it version 14 that uh, you guys I, had? I, 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 that was such a nightmare. I don't want to even... It brings back PTSD <laughs> just thinking about it. So don't even ask me. Um, that's how that's how I found it. Um, uh, but uh, you know, it had um, it had been around for a while before that. So it, it certainly is something that uh, uh, you know. It's one of these solutions where you know it's uh, uh, you know something that you might have uh, originally seen in you know, the early two thousands or you know nineties or something. Um, and so it's, uh, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it, we've been able to upgrade it to version 19 and, uh, make some definite improvements. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, uh, it, you know, it, it's just, uh, nice to see what, uh, you know, see them be able to take advantage of, uh, some of the, the more recent features in 4D. And I think it's a, uh, it should be a, uh, a, a bit of a, a case study in why it's worthwhile to upgrade some of these applications. You know, some people keep an old XP, uh, you know, uh, virtual machine around or, uh, you know, they keep buying machines off of eBay to, to keep their application running. But, uh, you know, guess what? In the meantime, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, a, a better functionality that can be made available uh, in your in your in your uh, 4D application, that uh, if you just upgrade, then it's then it's then it's available. So, so what were there any questions you had for me? Um, are we going to get to see? Are we going to get to see some software today? <laughs> Not today. Uh, <laughs> okay. But but Brent can set up another one where he can open it up and walk you through uh, what it looks like, uh, the reports, what the reports look like that I use. Um, for my admission committee meetings, um, um, stuff like that. Um, yeah, and, and it's, yeah, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's, it's, it, it helps to, uh, uh, keep track of the student data, uh, and all their, their test results. Um, but if uh, on one hand it's client server, but on the other hand, it's also serving the web. So, um, <clears throat> If you went to the uh, the med prep site, uh, you'd be able to uh, click in, and uh, you know, of course, Trent doesn't want to have a a, a torrent of uh, people, uh, fake uh, applicants and whatnot. But it it is uh, pu publicly available to um, yeah <clears throat> yeah to uh, I mean, uh, Jim, you can go in and create a, a fake application just to see a, how user friendly it is, if you like, because what I do is right before I don't open up the application until October. So any of you all can go in. It's not locked down. You can go in, go to the website, click on apply tab, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see my photo. And then underneath that, you will see um, you will see the application. And you can go in there and create applications just to, to see, because you may be able to pitch this to some clients that you may have. Because I think if I could push a button, Banner would be gone mm. across the nation. And 4D would be the new evolution of admissions uh, application intake 
if I had a magic ball that or a genie in a bottle, that'd be one of my three wishes on top of winning a Powerball. And so, um, <laughs> and so that's what I would do, guys. If you are like Brent, independent contractors, and you got clients in the field that I'm in, I'd say use us as a as a as a um, as a beta test model and pitch it to them. And if you need somebody to narrate the functionality of it, not the technical, I would be more than welcome to uh, dial into your Zoom meetings and share the success that I've had with it. Well, thanks, Trent. And thanks, thanks for sharing uh, about the med prep program. I, I think it's a great program and uh, <clears throat> doing, doing um, wonderful things out there for everybody. Um, you know, it's, uh, I know that we, uh, very often, especially uh, as recently as our last couple meetings, we we get uh, we we really geek out on uh, code and and the application side of things. And I know that uh, that Tim might be licking his lips for some of that as well. But in this case, I think it's it's more of uh, you know just uh, it's nice to see you know where Forty is um, is contributing to uh, to good cause out there and. Uh, oh. We, we yeah. usually see we usually see at least one method at the forty method. I believe this is the first forty method meeting <laughs> where we have not seen a single forty method, not even a single <laughs> line of forty code. I well, think Tim should go ahead and show a method if he wants to show one so bad. I mean, Brent, you're Brent, you're more than welcome if you want to dial into something. I don't know if you have that capability, but but well, Tim, it's, uh, is, Tim is not backing down. <laughs> let, let's see. You know, I, I, I don't want to, uh, 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 you know, share any uh, uh, student information, but um, I, I have, uh, you know, to, just to say that we did. Let's see if I can share uh, share my screen here. Show, show one cool thing. OK, that's all I'm asking. Just hey, hold on. Cool. Hey, Brent, before you do anything, hold on one one minute. Okay. Don't, don't do anything yet. Hold on. All right. Hold on. Okay, I, I I like John's comment. Uh, it was very touching and heartfelt, and I just wanted yeah. to capture it uh, on my phone. Yeah, that's cool. And I and I like to say something from the forty side. I really enjoyed case studies. The, the, to me, they're fascinating. The many you know hundreds of thousands of ways that forty is being used out there in the wild. Um, from my perspective, that's what makes it great to work at forty is hearing how it's used. And Trent, yours was a, a very great story, engaging. And I like the way you presented it. And like John said, I'm really glad that you um, you met Brent because Brent is one of our biggest advocates um, in the world, basically. Um, he was going to be our, our MC at the 40 Summit before we hit COVID, right? So he's, uh, he's really a, a big advocate of 40, as you know, from the 40 method. So thank you for the presentation. You, you're welcome. Um, and yeah, again, really it. please watch that eight minute video I sent you. Will do. Um, because you will see why I tell stories. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. No, it's, uh, it, it's great. And, you know, we all uh, try to support uh, uh, these, uh, these applications out there uh, as much as we can. And, um, you know, it's, uh, Unfortunately, it's not all in the, the same terms that Bob Cowie had uh, with with the uh, you know wide open budget. But uh, you know we do what we can to keep uh, keep the ball rolling and and uh, and make sure that uh, um, the 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 you know the people you know our users get what we need, right? Yeah, and I'm just curious: does anybody know Bob Cowie? Well, he used to be a client. This is Jim again at 4D. He was a client of mine. Okay. Um, and he did have several um, applications at the University of Illinois. Um, yes, yes, yep. And a good developer. And then, like you, I he I, he just fell off the off the map. Um, yeah. I was looking through my email. The last time we really exchanged email was right around the end of 2018, and I kept trying and trying and trying because we were getting people like, "What's happened? Where's Bob?" And I honestly do not know. Yeah, I did. Uh, I used to be in law enforcement, so I did a little. I try to do some, some, some back. I've been to his house before. That's how close we were. We would have programming meetings at his house uh -huh. and go grocery shopping and buy all these groceries and just spend the whole day eating and thinking up great things of 4D. 
So I know he had some tax things on his house that was paid off by somebody else. So I don't know if he sold his house. I don't know. I don't know where he's at, but mm-hmm. I, you know, he became family. Uh, he was a little quirky and a bit of an introvert. So mm-hmm. I hope he's okay. Yeah, as do I. I yeah. I hope the right. same thing. But I always was, know where we can find Brent, though. That's a good thing. Yeah, but Brent's kind of, <laughs> he ain't quirky. No. <laughs> well, that is Bob, not. Bob, if you're out there, you know, it's, uh, you know, well, we, we all hope you're well. And uh, yes, yeah, don't, no hard feelings with the quirkiness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I told him that. He, I used to have him laughing off his, he, he falling off his chair. I had him laughing so hard, so hard. <laughs> so, well, thank you, everybody. All right. Um, I will reach out to you, Bill. Thanks for that message. And um, if anybody ever need me, Brent can share. If you ever need me to participate in any pitch you're selling to a client to do the same thing we did, let me know. Awesome. Well, thank Thank you, Trent. Okay, bye. (laughs) All right, bye now. Well, thanks, Trent. And, uh, you know, and uh, like like I said, it was uh, more about... um, more about their mission and less about the code and the application itself. Oh, uh, I see you. Are you going to go in? Are you about to open up the website? Uh, I, I could, but. Uh, well, no, I was just saying Tim was the one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going I'm to survive without a 4D method. Present okay, okay, okay. Survive. Okay, okay, well. cool. <clears throat> Um, um, and you know, for 40 method is a, uh, you know, method can be interpreted as, uh, the method of doing it with 40, uh, as well. So it's not, not all about the code. I, I just don't want to scare off any, uh, anyone else who'd like to share their application without, um, you know, delving into their, uh, their code as well. So, okay. We'll see you. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Trey. Okay. Bye. <laughs> all right. Well, there's the website. Uh, let's see. It was, uh, what was it? siumed.edu slash medprep uh, to learn more about the program. And if you'd like to uh, go through a mock uh, 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 application process, that's all being hosted by 4D. Um, and uh, of course, we already had a couple of questions, but if you have any more for, for Trent, uh, you know, he's still here and happy to answer. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and, and jump to the, the next meeting. You can see our schedule at 40method.com slash schedule. Uh, again, open dates. Uh, <clears throat> got um, the next two meetings, July 27th and August 31st open. So uh, please do uh, uh, reach out with some ideas if you have some. Uh, plenty of, uh, you know, we're all doing plenty of work on plenty of different applications and um, Hopefully, uh, maybe somebody reaches out who's not even here in the meeting right now. Um, if that's you, please uh, please let me know what you what you uh, like to share. Um, just to wrap up, uh, now is a good time for any other questions, discussion, feedback is always appreciated, uh, especially from Tim. And um, and thanks uh, also to all of our awesome uh, uh, Patreon supporters that uh, helped to make this possible. You know. Uh, Jim's right. Uh, uh, does take a little bit of work to uh, to to get this all scheduled and planned and put together. And, and thanks to everyone uh, who's involved in making that happen, especially uh, you guys at at 4D and uh, Kirk and everyone that uh, does join the meetings here each time. So appreciate it and good to see you guys. Uh, thanks, and we'll see you next time. Good. Thank you, Brent. All right. <clears throat>